Hello, welcome to Big Picture Monday. My name is Callie Black. I'm going to tell you the quick story version of what's going on in this week's reading so that you can then focus on the actual spiritual lessons and diving into some of the other content and not have to worry so much about the comprehension aspect of it. Um, I hope you had a fantastic general conference weekend. Um, admittedly, I'm recording this before general conference, so I'm a little bit jealous, a little bit jealous that you guys are on the other end of it. <laughs> Hope it was awesome. Hope you learned lots. Hope you felt the spirit. Um, and if it wasn't the weekend that you were quite imagining, because I've had some of those where we end up in an um, emergency room for a part of general conference. <laughs> I've had those weekends before I get it. Um, then I hope that you are excited over the next couple days. Uh, the church has been really good at getting these talks out quickly on the Gospel Library app that you can then focus and dive in. Sometimes I know it's easier to read a talk than to listen or vice versa. Um, so have fun diving into those. I just I just want to let you know, Kristen and I do have this amazing, amazing program called Conference on the Go. We just renamed it. It used to be FHE on the Go, but it's the same thing. And each week we put out a special podcast episode that's just for subscribers and we talk you through one of the most recent general conference talks. So like literally the one that's coming out next week is going to be about a talk from this weekend. <laughs> We're recording it real quick this week. I'm excited. Um, but we like have a discussion around it. We're sharing personal stories. They're like usually eight to 10 minutes long. It's great for family nights. It's great for if you're preparing a lesson, like if you teach Relief Society or Young Omens or something and you're assigned a general conference talk, um, a great thing to use for that as well. Or if you just personally want to review these talks and have more of like a conversation feel around them after you listen to them. Kristen and I would love to be your conversation buddies for them. So I'll include a link in my bio for it. It's called Conference on the Go. Um, you can subscribe no matter what kind of phone you have, but there are different directions. So go, go grab all the details there or leave a comment below and I'll get you the link. Okay, let's talk about this week. We are discussing Exodus chapters 14 through 17. It's kind of a short reading, you guys, which I'm grateful for because I feel like especially after general conference, you hopefully have this renewed like energy towards come follow me and reading your scriptures. Um, I know I always feel like extra renewed and empowered, like, yes, I'm going to do it extra great now. Um, but then also there's a lot, like we just drank from a spiritual fire hose. So having just four chapters to study this week, I think is fantastic. All right. If you remember last week, we had just finished the Exodus, right? Like this is the whole reason the book is called Exodus. The children of Israel, they had um, done the Passover, which protected them from that 10th and final plague. And the firstborn sons were all killed for the rest of the Egyptians. And that was the breaking point for Pharaoh. And he said, get out. And so the Israelites got out. They left. They left Egypt. Like, this is it. Woohoo! They're probably so excited. They are literally led by the Lord, who appears as a pillar of fire or a pillar of cloud. And they are following his directions. They're going where he leads them to go. So that's where we start <laughs> as we start with Exodus chapter 14. But unfortunately, we've got to talk about the Pharaoh a little bit more. I know. I wish he was already out of the picture. But we've got one little more episode because clearly this guy could not soften his heart at all. <laughs> that could not happen. And so what happens is the children of Israel have left and the Pharaoh goes, wait, I didn't actually want that to happen. We need our slaves back. <laughs> like we need the people to do all this manual labor for us. And I'm not sure why I finally gave in to that. Plus... Moses at, at some point said that they wanted to go and worship in the wilderness for a few days. And so the Pharaoh might have thought they were all coming back. But at one point, the Pharaoh realizes, yeah, they're not coming back. <laughs> the children of Israel are not returning back to your terrible environment. They're gone. And so the Pharaoh is like, no, I'm going to go get them back. He cannot give them up. He takes all of his army and in these fancy chariots, like the children of Israel, do not stand a chance against the giant Egyptian army. Um, at this point, the children of Israel have been walking. They've been following the Lord and they are near the Red Sea. And the Egyptians come and corner them against the Red Sea. Like they know there is no way the Israelites are getting out of this one because there's a giant sea that they can't get through and they don't have boats, you know, like that. That is just it. 
Now the Israelites are terrified and they in fact start to say like, okay, what is, what was the point of this? Why, why were we just freed from the Egyptians if the Lord is going to lead us to a place where we are now cornered and we will now all be killed? And Moses gets up and he talks to them and he tells them, don't have fear. Don't have fear. The Lord is with us. He will provide. Um, the Lord, Moses prays to the Lord about what he should do. And the Lord tells him to take his rod, his big stick, and to go to the Red Sea and to place it down and that the waters would start to part. It does say it takes all night long um, for this initially to happen. And so the waters part and the children of Israel are able to walk through on dry ground. They are able to walk through the Red Sea. They get to the other side. At this point, the Egyptians had kind of been like camping, waiting to see what they're doing in a different area. And so the Egyptians are like, what is going on? Let's go catch them because that can't happen. They go to pursue them. And then the water starts to recede back to where it was. And all of the pursuing Israelites are drowned. And that is it. The children of Israel are now really free. And I think in chapter 15, as we start that chapter, I think the Israelites can sense this too. Like, okay, we already had the Exodus. You would have thought we'd be like celebrating last time, but there was something final about that. Like they are now really free. And so I love chapter 15 because it starts off with them celebrating. There's a beautiful song, poetry um, that's recorded that just has this beautiful language about worshiping the Lord. We also learn a little bit more about Miriam. Miriam is a prophetess. She is called a prophetess in the scriptures. We also know Miriam is Moses's older sister. Remember two weeks ago when we were learning about how Moses um, was born and that the whole beginning of his story, how he had a sister who watched him float down the river and made sure that um, Moses's mother and her mother could then nurse baby Moses for the first little bit. That was Miriam, that was Miriam. So she is older than Moses and she is a prophetess and she helps to lead some of that singing and that celebration as well. The Israelites are just so happy they worship and they are ecstatic. And after this, they start wandering some more. The Lord is now leading them on a journey and, and they're walking. And eventually at one point, they go three days without water. They cannot find water. They can find bitter water, but they can't find anything that they're actually gonna drink. And so they start to murmur. And I'm just gonna tell you right now, Israelites and murmuring, we're going to see that together an awful lot over these next few weeks as we study the, the children of Israel. And I don't want to ever seem like, um, how dare they? Because if I had to go three days walking in the wilderness without water, I'd probably complain too. Um, but I think there are also lessons that we can learn for them. So I think we can like empathize with them at certain points and other times we can be like, okay, how could I maybe react a little better to my situation? So they start murmuring and Moses goes to the Lord and says, listen, we haven't had water. My people are complaining. What are we going to do? And the Lord shows him, Moses, a tree. And this tree has sweet water in it and everyone's able to drink the water. And the Lord also teaches them, listen, if you obey the commandments and the covenants that I give to you, I'm going to keep you safe from all the plagues that I sent on the Egyptians. I'm going to keep... Um, everything away from you as long as you're staying obedient. So the Lord finds a way to teach the children of Israel as they're enjoying the sweet water as well. Next chapter, chapter 16, um, Israelites continue to move forward. And at this point, they're now starting to complain about food. There's no food. They don't have enough to eat. They used to have enough and now there's just not enough for them to eat. And so they start murmuring, they start complaining they go to Moses with all this complaining. Moses takes it to the Lord and says, Lord, what are we going to do? My people are hungry. Um, not sure what we should do. And the Lord says, I will provide bread for them. Now, in the descriptions, it does seem more like it's a, a grain um, that they can then do whatever they want with. They can make bread with it or they can make it into other substances. Um, but the Lord tells Moses, hey, I am going to provide this bread grain substance for them every single day and every single day they need to go out and collect this they need to go grab it except on the sabbath i don't want them doing that 
And so the day before the Sabbath, they can go out and collect twice as much and it will stay good for those two days. But otherwise, it's not ever going to stay good longer than just the day that they have it for. So Moses teaches this to the people. He tells them the Lord is giving us and he calls it manna. The Lord is giving us manna each day. We need to go collect it only one day at a time, but the day before the Sabbath, do <laughs> twice as much. And some people try to test this. Some people go out just on a regular day and try and gather a whole bunch, and then it spoils and it doesn't stay good. Um, so some people test what Moses says, and it proves to be true. Um, the Lord also sends a bunch of quails so that they can also get some protein and some substance as well. All right, and then the final chapter, chapter 17, we start with one more instance of them running out of water again. They're in a new location, and the children of Israel start to murmur, of course, and um, Moses takes this to the Lord and says, what do we do? We don't have water, and the Lord says to Moses, here's a rock. Take your rod and smite the rock, and you guys will have water, and it happens. It happens. They all get water another miracle and then at the very end of chapter 17 our last chapter here we get a cool little story that maybe you've heard before i feel like for me this is one of the stories that stands out in the old testament um because the children of israel are not just wandering around in an empty wilderness i know that's kind of what i've pictured sometimes is like they're just walking around no one's around oh no there are people around like other people live where they are. Um, and so they run into, there's this guy named Amalek. And so the people who um, belong to King, King Amalek are called Amalekites, not Book of Mormon Amalekites, okay? Amalekites. And they go up to battle against the children of Israel. Like they are literally coming to battle against them. And so Moses turns to this guy named Joshua don't forget Joshua's name. You're going to want to remember Joshua's name. And he turns to Joshua and he says, listen, gather up an army and prepare to fight against Amalek. That's your job. And so this guy, Joshua, prepares an army of the Israelite men and he goes to battle against Amalek. And uh, while this is happening, Moses goes up on a little hill that's overlooking the battle and he starts to pray to the Lord. Now, the way that they would pray in Old Testament times, and we have lots of records of this, is that they would raise their hands up to heaven while they prayed. And so that's what Moses did. He raised his hands up to heaven and he prayed. And he noticed when his hands were raised in prayer, the Israelites were winning. But as soon as he finished that prayer and he put his hands down, the Amalekites were winning. And so Moses said, listen, I think I know what I have to do. Now, his brother Aaron, who is um, like a very important leader to the Israelites as well, and another guy named her, H-U-R, her, who was another leader of the Israelites, were both with Moses at the time. And so Moses tells them, I've got to keep my hands raised in prayer. I've got to keep doing this. And he was starting to get tired. And so Aaron and her get Moses to sit down on a rock at least, and they are holding Moses's hands up for him as his hands get heavy. It says his hands get heavy, and they stand by him all the way until the end of the day, keeping his hands raised in great support. And the Israelites win. It is a successful battle for them. The Lord tells Moses, make sure you write this down, keep a record of this. And then Moses builds an altar to the Lord and offers sacrifices out of his immense gratitude. Okay, that's it for this week's reading. So we are like starting into this wilderness experience that the Israelites are going to have. We start with that Red Sea experience and then we see like this celebration and this joy and this worshiping the Lord and literally in the same chapter then murmuring against the Lord about not being able to find water. Um, we see not being able to find food and the Lord gives a beautiful um, blessing of daily manna. And just for the record, the Lord provides manna every single day for the next 40 years for these Israelites. He doesn't stop until literally they cross into the promised land. <laughs> um, what a beautiful and powerful blessing that that is. And then we end with that story of um, Joshua fighting against Amalek and Moses needing to keep his hands raised and having Aaron and her there supporting him. So for my spiritual question, I just, I love that last story. I really do at the end of chapter 17. And I feel like, as I mentioned, 
it is kind of used pretty often in the church. And I feel like I've heard it the most often as like, how can we support our prophet and make his burdens lighter? Or like other local church leaders or stake leaders, how can we support them and make their burdens lighter? But I, I'm all for that. I just want to broaden the question a little bit. How can you lift up the hands of anyone who has heavy hands right now? I don't care what their calling is. I don't care what they're going through. I guarantee you can think of some people who have some heavy hands right now, some heavy burdens that they have to carry, and we can't take it away from them. But how can we help to lift up their hands and to take a little bit of that burden and that load, or at least let them know that you're going to stay there until the sun goes down, just like Aaron and her did? I really want to focus on that this week about how I can be a blessing to other people and to lighten their burdens. All right, have a great week this week. Just as a short programming note, next week is actually Easter week, the week leading up to Easter. And there is a Come Follow Me manual page. There are sections for it and scriptures you can study, but I'm not doing a Big Picture Monday for Easter week. I don't do Big Picture Mondays for Easter or Christmas weeks because you probably know the big picture of Easter. <laughs> um, there's not too much I feel I can add to those conversations um, as for like just the story version of it. So I will not see you next week for Easter week, but I will be back the following week once we jump back into the Old Testament again. Okay, have a great week this week and happy studying.